Thanks for joining me here. This July, my friend Tracy and I explored Southern Alabama. We packed a lot in for a few days, all while being COVID safe. When I told Tracy we would be visiting Monroeville, she asked me if I knew about the famous quilters of the G's Bend Collective in Boykin, Alabama. Growing up in Amish, New York State, and then moving to Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, my mama taught me how to quilt. So I was really interested in meeting these talented artists and learning the history and legacy of G's Bend. Coming from Monroeville, we found out we would be taking a ferry to cross the Alabama River to the country town of Boykin. This free ferry was super cool. We're going on the ferry ride. Woohoo! Going to G's bed. <laughs> He's not telling me, should I go in and out? <laughs> Okay. This is so cool. So I'm here with Joe. And we're talking about this ferry going over to G's Bend, and and it's uh, actually the first all-electric, uh, not not hybrid, all-electric ferry in the nation. That's so cool, cutting ride. edge. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's Very cool. And so we were talking about this ferry goes every day. How many times? Five round trips a day uh, from the town of uh, uh, Camden, which is where we left from, to the uh, little town of Boykin and G's Bend. Okay. Uh, Residents, maybe. I think they might be up to about, about 400 now. Okay. It's a really, really small town. Really small town. Well, this is lovely. We made it. Tracy had visited here before, and I was looking forward to meeting her friends, Marianne and Emma Petway. Looking at here in these photos. Some of them are my relative. Okay. Some of them no relate to me at all, but they are Petway. Okay. And when did they start? Um, when did y'all start quilting? I started back quilting in 2014. I mean, 2006. Okay. And I've been working for 16 years. I'm mean, 14 years. What are you working on here? Yeah, it's a piece of all, all more things. I'm filming a piece in here, look. I said, got to give it a name and stamp and then sign it. You'll be ready to get out of here. Somebody want to buy it. <laughs> So I started with the collective in 2005, and then in 2006, in January, uh, we had a, a group of people coming out. Even John Lewis came now. Yeah, so, really? Yeah. I met him, got photographed with him oh. uh, that year because we spoke and going to um, Atlanta, to the High Museum in March of that okay. year. Okay, yeah. And so then they asked me to be the manager, so I've been doing this ever since. And his name was William Arnett. Yes. They called it William. Yes. Yes. Discover yes. You? Well, uh, this book, uh, anime, he saw this quilt in a, uh, in a book on a ripped across of five wood. And so he told, oh. he asked Anna May. <laughs> was it at uh, her house? Yeah. yeah. But she had forgot she had the quilt. And she looked for the quilt. But was it out here? No, it's not here. That's I here. mean, when he saw it, where was it? Where was it? He saw this quilt right there here. It was in a book, and he saw this picture in a book. See, somebody else had taken the, the picture, and he said, when he saw this quilt on this fire, fire wood, he said, I need to find the lady that made this quilt. So when he found Miss Anna May, that's how it turned out to be. It exploded after that. See, that was the first book they did. And this one right here, my um, jacket. 
kind of torn. It was red, red, white, and black. And that's my mama's quilt. That's the one that put outside. That's your mama's quilt. Oh, now, my Stacey, God. When yes. You, see, when you came, that wasn't out. No, I that's what I told Wendy. That was not yeah. here. You know, a friend of mine has uh, done it for me. And it is beautiful. Thank you. It was somebody out of, out of Washington. This lady named Ann Howard. She was the one that painted it. When did she do that? Miss, um, I think about two, three, almost three years ago. Okay. I was trying to make it like this, and then I got to, I think I got to this point here. I said, oh, let me do a Mary Ann Pitwick quilt. So mine had more purple in it than hers. Oh, listen, there you go. And um, Mary Lee Bendall, Minnie, Minnie, Minnie Sue Coleman, okay, living, deceased, my aunt Ruth Moe, the deceased, Lila Moon, this is Emma, grandmother. Oh. Lila Moon, the deceased, Laurel Petway, still living, Alonzo Petway, my daughter, grandmother, uh, she's deceased, Anna Mae Young, deceased, Laurel Petway again, living, Jesse T. Petway, living, and Pat Ann Weed, deceased. So all these are the 10 that was on the stamp in 2006. They did it again, you'd be on there. You think? Absolutely. So I'm out of here. You got names on them. Yep. She's got people's <laughs> names. Aww. And then she finishes them and sends them to you. Look at that. Corduroy. Yeah, some of them I took apart. I think I had this good to kill. We've got a bunch of those. Oh, look at that. Those good ones to kill. See with names on them? That's how you get them. in the car and took us for a ride to their family house, which has been in their family for generations. When the slave owner came in, people really didn't have houses. These houses here, uh, he came and he built these houses back in the early 20s or 50s and uh, early 60s. And my grandparents, both grandparents, House. The house that both of their houses were made and they used newspaper at the time when people built houses because it was a lot of holes in, in between the plank. So they used the newspaper and clothes to keep the air out. Yeah, there's still newspaper in that one room. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's how uh, they got those houses. The older men came and they all worked together to build those houses so they can have a decent house. The people who lived in them yeah. built them? The people that lived in them. The whole community would get together and help each other to build the house. That's kind of so, like an old fashioned barn raising. Uh -huh. <laughs> right up in there. And this house uh, was my, uh, that's my great grandmother's house. Lucy Mooney. This is Lucy Mooney house. And uh and she's my great grandma. And is and she the one who there's a picture of in there or it's your grandmother? Not not your great grandmother. Oh, uh, that was my grandma. And we hadn't really came back and redid the house since uh our tenant moved out. So this is it. But you talk about real peaceful. It is very yes. peaceful up here. Yes. My husband and I, when 
We want to get away. This is your getaway? Yeah. Come up here, get out on the porch. We come. I used to cut out pieces and sit there on the porch and make pieces. Mm. And we had a group to come after you all did. We had a group to come. Uh, they were from Georgia. And stay here a couple of days. After visiting her family home, Emma showed us a few more projects she's working on. These ladies are some of the hardest working women I've ever met. Like every great piece of art, a signature means so much more. We were so grateful to meet Marianne and Emma Petway and look forward to seeing our new friends soon. So after our visit to G's Bend, we headed back to the ferry and made our way to Spanish Fort, Alabama, an historic Blakely State Park and Civil War site. We had a little adventure though, because I forgot to check the gas gauge and we were in rural Alabama. Whoops. I wanted to give a shout out to my Patreon patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Want to know more about exclusive itineraries and free content? Check out my support links below. Hi, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have much more content on my website, travelwithwendy.net, and you can also support this channel by becoming a Patreon patron. The links are below. Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy.